Vodafone presents the pre-match. It's our opening playoff game here for the Asia Minor. We get to see the Renegades go up against VG Gaming. Now, this is a story which actually isn't as old as you would think coming from this region because Renegades quite usually normally have an easier run. Maybe don't have to kind of go through this. They don't have to play against these teams as often within their own region because they're the ones that have been living in North America. They're the ones who have been practicing hardcore across this. They're the ones getting regular invites to these bigger tournaments. But the question is, the pressure is on now. Does this give Vici a chance? Not really. <laughs> there we not, go. Not really, not really. I'll tell you why. Renegades playing at 70, 60% capacity of mm -hmm. what they can really play at. Like against some, let's be honest, they have so much more practice and so much more op yeah. better opposition to play against all the time. They're living in NA, all the events they play at. And Vici Gaming, they live in this little bubble where they play mostly against domestic competition, against the Chinese team. It's going to make out with the style as well. They're not used to, they don't really react or adapt to a different style. They just play their wacky style, which can work. Bear in mind, they have firepower. Mm -hmm. They have some basic, basic fundamentals in place but against the renegades who have so many you know tricks and you know so many like layers to the way to play counter strike i really don't see vici taking this game in any in any parallel universe in any multiple version of this simulation that we live in now i, I definitely agree some things we we often find ourselves talking about is the fact that you can go up again against this unorthodox play style from from china so to speak but renegades as we also talked about in the pre-show it's a team that has gone through these asian miners time and time again without struggling at all they may lose once in a while to tai Lu, but tai Lu is by no means a bad team, but they always qualify. So simple as it is, Renegades have all the experience needed in order to take on such an opposition like Vichy Gaming. That said, you know, we are surprised by Vichy Gaming. We do think they played better than we expected coming into this one. They were taking out Gosu Gaming yesterday in the sort of like deciding game. Uh, and, and that was a big surprise to me at least, because I thought Gosu Gaming were looking pretty solid, uh, whereas Vichy Gaming made it happen. Yeah, I mean, I think the Ghosts were leading 14 to 5 on train. And, that's a tough and, one. and then they lost in overtime as Vici. But that's a cool, good thing to note, though. I mean, Ghosts have been struggling to close out games, of course. But Vici Gaming, we have these people on, on the camera here. And the first Asian minor, it was Omen, it was Advent and Zoking who played with Savage and TB from CyberZen when they were known as CyberZen back then. These guys have been playing Asian minors multiple times. I think their uh, this particular lineup has impressed me a little bit. We have Kaze, of course, from Malaysia. He played in, he's played in multiple Asian minors, especially with the Malaysian team back then. He's been a star player so far. He's been playing out of his mind. Alongside Freeman from Hong Kong, these two guys have been solid as a rock so far in all the wins they've had. Um, then, of course, we have Omen, we have Advent. I think Advent's an in-game leader right now. And then, of course, we have Mr. Zoking who has some of the most ridiculous arm movements I've ever seen of any Counter-Strike player. Most people are like, small little tidbit, most people think he plays at a very high sensitivity. He doesn't. It's pretty low sensitivity, but every time I see him move his mouth, it's like his arm just might dislocate and just fly <laughs> off, man. It's ridiculous. He's using all his force to move himself around the map, but is it going to be enough this time around? At least I'd say the one thing, right, and come on to that point where Vici played against Gosu is, Gosu should have been a team where you can go, okay, look, we can play our own game, but we're used to this style. We know what to do. They didn't adapt when it came into it and we talk about this oh so often Vici they just have again that crazy Chinese style so many heavy hitters you can never predict what they're gonna do but against a team like Renegades this is just a oh we're gonna play our game we're gonna sit there and chill we know how we can work this out it's a complete different beast right James it's it's Renegades coming into this one as the heavy favorites and and for the first time or one of the first times I feel Renegades have really for a long time now shown some great counters right like Renegades used to be this team that when they came into the Asian minors we would think to ourselves all right Renegades you're playing well sometimes during your European positions you have the upset potential but it's not a consistent basis every single time whereas for this Renegades lineup especially since they got in Lias and Greatest Faction I feel it's becoming more consistent now the level and the sort of like low level Renegades the level of Renegades that is showing up when they're only playing at 70 or 80% of their full capacity is still a force to be reckoned with so in that regard I don't see any chance at all for Vici Gaming they need to come out hot and blazing they need to have some of those individuals go completely off and they need to find a way to rattle Renegades and I haven't seen Renegades being rattled by anyone else than the top European opposition as of late. No, no. Obviously, they, Renegades had a close game against Greyhound, right? There was a there was an option there for Greyhound to really push them to their limits. We but saw even, even there, right? Even game. there, they didn't get rattled out. You know, even in a in a close scenario where they're playing their countrymen, which is a pride thing for them, of course. Renegades know they're the better team. Renegades know they're supposed to win. Not even in a situation where they're on the brink of losing, so to speak, and, and actually going to a third map, they didn't seem rattled at all. And if they can't do it, if Greyhound is not able to rattle Renegades, I don't see VG Gaming being able to either. Yep. Now, Blair, what's it going to take here, though, for us? Because we keep coming back to this. 
this right, over and over here at the Asian Minor, no matter how many years back you go, these teams, they can only get so far. It's only Tai Lu that can ever challenge them. What's yeah. it going to take for the other teams within this region to be able to do it? Well, it's very simple, right? Every time I've seen, like, uh, you talk about Greyhound, you talk about Tainted Minds, you talk about Immunity, Chiefs, Atletico, all the Australian teams, have all the lineups who play the Asian Minor, and many of them, all, it's very rare they'd ever, you know, come third third place. Most of them get bottom up the fourth because it loses either Tai Lu or some of the other Asian teams. Yeah. The Mongols, for example, come to mind. And every time I've spoken to them, you can talk to Chad as well, like just like drop, you know, go back the days and ask him what really happened. They're like, they just pushed in. <laughs> you can't expect that. And that's what I think VG need to do here. If they're going to just play to the strengths and just try to play static CS or play a little scared, they're going to lose 100%. But if they try to throw a curveball, so to speak, you know, uh, be unpredictable, try and be, uh, try and just like throw a wrench in the work, so to speak, and make Renegade start to second guess themselves and try to try to isolate these players, try to go for individual fights. Because as much as we might praise Renegades for having some very individually gifted players that we got, Jacob has been great so far, Gratisfaction has been pretty good. Azar and JKS, we saw glimpses of the past coming out from them as well. But then if you look at VG Gaming, Zoking, Freeman, and Kaze are people you do not want to trifle with, especially when it comes to the pure raw aim ability, right? So try and maximize what you have. You have the firepower, you have the element of surprise, and try to use that for your advantage. Short term, sure thing. I definitely agree with what you're saying. Play, play to your own strengths with, ah, you know, the unpredictable Counter-Strike, which is the aim-heavy base Counter-Strike and the surprise element, so to speak. If you want to be good long term, these Asian teams should look, really look into getting an experienced coach and can sort of like change the culture. I'm Pimp's on uh, the market, by the way. I'm not yeah, on no, the market at all. This is the second day in a row now he's been trying to sell himself he's out. Sell himself. Very low key, but I mean, I'm doing this for free. I'm not getting money. paid to say, <laughs> of course, because you love Counter-Strike Counter -Strike so much. I just much. love Counter-Strike. Yeah. I would love to see Asian flourish, you know, because I see a lot of potential within the Asian scene. We see a lot of individual players who can make it far, but they need somebody to tell them what's the right thing to do and what's not the right thing to do. We saw Cybersyn yesterday making one mistake after the other, and it's not like a, a mistake where you think, all right, you, you could have done differently, or there maybe was a case to be made that you did the right thing. It was blessingly just bad individual decision making. Yep. They don't have the culture, they don't have that coach to tell them what's wrong, what's different, right? What should we do instead? So yes, short term, play to your own strengths here, go into this game and just play what you got. But if you want to be good long term, and that goes not only for Vichy Gaming or Cybersyn, get some experienced players on your team, get a coach that knows what he's doing and try to change that culture around the Asian Counter-Strike scene right now. Because I do see a lot of potential and I do feel if that's a step they want to take, if they want to if they want to accept, sorry, a new guy into their circle, so to speak, to change that culture, we're going to see it like we saw with NA, you know, that's a, a scene that is a great example of how they went from being just aim puggers to now actually have a solid fundamental in teams like Cloud9, Liquid, NRG for that matter. Cloud9, definitely a good example there. They're doing amazing right now. Um, but in, in other but words... Even NA they, 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 did, they did win yeah. a major, James. <laughs> yes, completely different roster. This current Cloud9 is terribly terrible. Don't go to that situation. Let's not go there. Let's get into the veto, though. And realistically, is there anything where Vici can have a bit of an advantage here? Because uh, we saw, interestingly enough, they've had a difficult set of choices when it comes to maps. Yeah, I don't think... I'm just going to take a look at the notes here. I don't think uh, Vici's going to have a good time here because both these teams don't like playing Nuke and Dust2. These are two maps that Renegades also don't like. Mm -hmm. And on the maps they like playing, there's the maps that Renegades are very comfortable on as well. So obviously, Renegades have, have a deeper playbook. They have a better understanding of how these maps work. But that being said, I think a Nuke and Cash are going to be taken out of the picture early on. Yep. These are two maps that uh, Renegades obviously will always ban out Nuke. They're not going to take a chance there. Then we have Cash being banned out by Vici. That's the usual bans to go with. Um, I'm expecting Inferno coming out from Vici because of all the maps they've played, that's a one map where they look pretty decently convincing on. Speaking of which, they just banned out Overpass early on, which is surprising. But then again, they're expecting Ch Chinese teams not to play Nuke, which is completely understandable, right? Yep. So I, I might see the second map uh, banned coming out uh, from Renegades to be Nuke, Overpass Cash being banned. Inferno pick from Vici, and now Renegades have the freedom to pick what they want to yeah. do. I think they're a be better team on Mirage as well. I think they're a better team on Train. They have the option to what to go for. So there we go. They're going to pick Mirage against Vici. The Renegades are one team who are very comfortable playing Mirage against Nation teams. Yeah, and that's just a, a complete comfort pick right here for Renegades. I think they're showing a lot of confidence in this video process. As you said, the fact that they're going with a ban for overpass and leaving Nuke, you know, for a potential punish pick, which they know they're not going to face anyway, yep. it's just confidence. Because even if they were to pick Nuke and throw in that curveball and just play, you know, a game of, of Counter-Strike where nobody really knows what they're doing, Renegades still believe they're going to win that one. So in that regard, it's not a problem at all. Inferno being picked out by Vici Gaming, as you said, makes sense. It's one of the maps that we have seen the Chinese team play well on. Yep. Uh, we also have seen them play in this tournament so far. Whereas for Renegades, again, not a problem for them. Inferno is a very solid map for them. Solid fundamentals, solid players. You know, J. Kim is a guy who thrives a lot on Inferno as well. So it's going to be super tough no matter where they go. As for a third map, it, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be Mirage because uh, 
okay, Vici panic dust is a little surprising because now it leaves the option. Sorry, not Mirage, my bad. Uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be Train. Mm -hmm. Vici panic dust makes no sense to me because they should be playing uh, banning this a little bit more cajone, so to speak, right? The dust is a map that Renegades don't even like playing. Now that you've banned out dust too, obviously Renegades are going to ban Nuke out and it's going to be, uh, the final map is obviously going to be on. Um, on train, which is something which the Renegades are very, very comfortable on. So looking at this map right here, Vici might be able to take Inferno. They could if they play out of their minds here, but yeah, this series is going to wave Renegades. Mirage, they are definitely the better team. Train as well, they're extremely the, uh, they're definitely the better team as well. So I would have liked to see Vici ban out train and just go for Dust too, and just hope for the best there. It's also a part of like lack of knowledge, right? Because when you look at the HLTV stats and when you look at the stats Renegades have on Dust two, they've won hundred percent of their matches on Dust two in the past three months. Not necessarily the best map, but if you're yeah. Vici gaming yeah. and looking at those statistics, there's a reason you don't want to play Dust two against Gross. Renegades. So in that regard, we talked about them not playing against each other, not living in the same area, they don't ping well for each other. So Vici gaming is also a little bit limited in terms of what are we actually going up against. Whereas Renegades, they don't have to worry about Vici gaming; they can just play their own play their own maps and win the game simple. Well, let's see if they do win the game simple, right? Renegades certainly have the advantage when it comes to this. And although we continue to talk about these Chinese players and their regions, what do you think now, Blair, we really need to look at for Vici in particular in order to take the next step here? Is this still possible? Because even if they lose out to Renegades, right, they only go to the lower bracket. There's yeah. a climb that can still be had. Well, that completely depends on the second matchup, which is the one where I'm more interested. Not because I don't think this matchup is going to be bad by any any means, but just the fact that Renegades is just too much to form favorites over here, right? On the other hand, we have Gosu facing against... Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Gosu. Uh, MVP facing off against Greyhound. They're going to be that's going to be one barn burner of a game. And whichever it, it depends on who they're going to be facing off. If it's going to be Greyhound, it's going to be a rematch again for Vici Gaming, and it's going to be again very interesting if they, to, to see if they've done the homework, which they haven't really had time to be honest, because yeah. they obviously they've been prepping for Renegades. And if it's going to be MVP, that's a whole different ball game. MVP versus these guys could be you know because Vici Gaming Chinese teams always have the edge against the the Koreans because they don't know what to expect. So. There we it's go. The I think the one, thing, it, right? the one thing they have going for them, Vici Gaming, is of course the fact that they play with no pressure whatsoever. Yeah. They know that they're heavy underdog here. They know they're supposed to lose. We don't give them many chances. Frankly, themselves probably give themselves many chances. So they can go True. into this game with complete no pressure at all. Can they put up a fight, maybe even take a map or expand on their map pool and expand on their experience together as a team playing under these circumstances? That's going to fare in well to a potential loser game match against either MVP or Greyhound for that matter. So in that regard, they have everything to win, so to speak. The only thing you don't want to see from Vici Gaming is a 16-2, 16-2 loss, where they don't really get into the game or where they get complete outskilled yeah. or outclassed. That would be a disappointment. But I do expect double digits on, on some of the maps. I do expect Renegades to struggle a little bit here and there. But when it comes to rattling them out and making them doubt that they're going to win the game, Renegades have seemed so stable and so consistent as of late that I don't see Vici Gaming being able to do that just by themselves. Which is interesting because all the, the, the maps we're playing today is going to be the same map they played in the previous time they faced off against each other, which is at Pro League, the Pro League Finals, where it was Mirage, it was Inferno, it was Train. And uh, Vici did actually put up a decent fight. They actually got to 12 rounds on Inferno, their map pick, and 9 rounds in Mirage. Yes, they did lose 2-0, but it's not like they got completely destroyed. So looking at the maps as well, it's going to be the exact rematch. It's a sense of deja vu over here. The thing question is, is Vici going to be ready? Well, that's going to be the question. Is Vici going to be ready? We're about to find out. Thank you very much for your thoughts, guys. As we're about to get into the game, we're about to get ready. Pimp may be for hire, but you know who else is for hire? But maybe not for the Asia reason, just for some epic commentary. It's Harry and Hugo to take us away. Thank you very much, James. Yeah, the first time you've had the displeasure this event of, uh, of throwing to us. So we're, we're glad to be here, obviously, over on the Asian region. Harry, how are you feeling coming into this game? I'm fi I, I'm looking forward to this. You know, we were speaking to Blair a little bit before we head into this, you know, the man with the box. We, we yeah. love Blair's box. Um, and, you know, for, for me, I <laughs> one, one of the things that is so interesting about Renegades, obviously, yet to lose in these playoff stages to teams other than Tai Lu, and obviously Mongols, right? But that one was in, in the first yeah asia minor circuit so yeah you know it has been a very long time uh you know it doesn't doesn't even really look like entirely the same team over in the renegades camp so yeah it's been it's been a while i'm excited for this one though hugo i i i hope that vici can keep that game up from what we saw the other day right we had phenomenal stuff from freeman and kazi i think that's going to be who we look towards for vici to step up here in these maps. They're gonna be the two players i really want to see continue that momentum continue the success that we saw them have just the other day, Renegades, obviously the boys, they are going to be the heavy favorites in this matchup. But Hugo, we're getting ready to head into Mirage. 
And I have to ask, I want to ask for your prediction here, both for this map and for the series. I'm lining up with Betway. Those odds are looking very favorable for Renegades. And Harry, you love a couple of boys, but you've got five of them on the server now to support. I know, arguably too many. We need some less boys in here? Yeah, yeah, we do indeed. Renegade's going to be starting off over on that T side. Obviously, this is their map pick, Vici, choosing to start for this counter-terrorist side. You can take a look at the buy. Gratis Faction and Az are going to be picking up utility. And with these two smokes, I think this is just where we see this play into the A-bomb site. Going to go to smoke off the cross, you imagine. We see most teams elect to leave CT open. And I tell you what, if Renegades do that, Hugo, they're going to be feeling great because no one's in CT for Vici. So that issue that we often see teams run into should get dodged as they are allowed to cross for free into CT and take control of this portion of the map. You can see that bomb. It's planted for CT. So Vici might be hard pressed to get back into this. It's a 5v5 retake to kickstart this one, Hugo. Has got a flashbang ready. The issue is Vici not coming back to the spawn, not wanting to get caught. But the issue is Renegades are going to get so much info. They can even begin the wrap round towards jungle. Freeman now is already on the site, but kills are coming through swimmingly for the Renegades. Already one man left up alone, and it's Kaze stuck in a one on three. He's going to get knifed. Great start to the map for Renegades. Already starting to instill some fear in Vici here for this series. And I definitely think there should be some fear, but a 1 0 beginning for Renegades on their map pick of Mirage. Vici, yeah, I, how, how do you think this is going, Harry? Do you think we're going three? Do you think this is going to be a 2 0? I'd love to know where you stand. Well, uh, you know, Inferno is like a bit of a comfort map for the Vici guys. Normally one they're pretty comfortable on. And also a map that Renegades have looked a little shaky on. But that said, I, I really do think it, it, a lot of it depends on individual form between Freeman and Kazi, right? We've really seen if these two guys fall silent, that's where Vici struggle. I want to wait and see if we have these two players present in the server. Miss Smoke down here in mid, actually. So let's uh, take a look at this round because... Maybe they're able to get something done with these USPs as we do see Renegades working this mid portion of the map. And actually, it's been a pretty stellar call on their part to hit this B-bomb site. That's barren and empty right now. Vici stacking all five players over towards this A portion of the map. Sorry to dodge your question a little bit there, Hugo. No, that's fine. I do it all the time, so you know, yeah. <laughs> I can't really get annoyed, can I? I think, uh, you know, while we're talking about storylines for this game, I think one of the worries is Inferno, though, because, you know, while set on the desk, OK, this is a good map. This is a comfort pick for Vici. If we remember back on that first day of the Asian Minor, going up against Gosu, Vici struggled in Inferno. They got yep. wrecked 16-8. Now, obviously, they bounced back and played their, their next game versus Gosu, the best of three that they just stomped them out in. But it depends what Vici we have, Harry. Do that's we have that first? First day Vici here. Exactly. That's that that's what I was kind of hinting towards. I think that is gonna be Vici's real problem is their reliance on a few key players making big plays, having big moments. One of the men on your screen as well. This is you know the, the player that we've been talking about a lot on the Vici side of things, especially on Mirage where they did break go suit. All ten players staying alive. Hugo, do you finally have a name for this? No, I oh. never will. I only I, I, I know I only throw you under the bus because I still remember that time where I, I, I try I tried to make you come up with one on the spot and then someone died so you didn't have to do it and then I remember after that game you come up to me and you're like I've done it I figured out the name for when ten players stay alive and you haven't had a chance to bust it out. It was so months I, ago. I know it was I months ago. I know I know it was. I don't know if I even ever came up with it. <laughs> I just told you that to mess with you and didn't oh, call me out. Who knows? Deary me. Well, you shouldn't. You know, that's the boy who cried wolf story for you. Renegades over here towards the beer apartments. I'm not looking to cry any wolf in this round though. This doesn't look like they're setting up for fakes. Instead, might just be this B bomb site commitment. Three, sorry, two players here. Four Vici. You can see Orman over towards short Freeman tucked away over at the bench. They're going to have to play very reactively. That's the one issue. As these flashes rain in, rotations are coming through for Vici, but already losing Freeman. Ooh, they spot Azza down in the connector. I was going to say it was worth keeping our eye on him, but this flank isn't going to get a chance to come in for Renegades. And now suddenly into this two on four, that bomb still yet to go down. Oh, nice spray though. One found for Gratis Faction, but the instant double trade from Zoking. A nice read there from Vici. It seemed like they had an idea what was going on for Renegades. We had Azza try and sell the fake to middle because of no CT control in mid. He throws out Molly from underpass towards the window, a smoke in the connector. Just tries to sell the fact that Renegades are in middle and looking to split towards that A site through Con. And then we see Orman push up on short and take him down. So very, very aware. One step ahead of Vici in that round. 
And as a result, a very quick rotate towards that B site to lock down the post plant. We do see the Chinese off to their first round on the CT side. And Renegades, well, they've got the money for the buy, but do they bring in the AWP? That's the question. Jacob can drop it over, or we can run Glass Cannon. Considering Kaze has yet to get his own AWP on the CT side, that'd be a, a nice start for Renegades. Now the tech timeout is already over, so we're back into things nice and quickly. And one of the things I'm very excited about is getting to see this duel between Gratis Faction and Kazi. I mean, I'm curious to see how that one pans out. Now, he does have the AWP in this round, does Gratis Faction. You'll note, as you said, there isn't one out for Vici. Gratis Faction going to be taking his AWP over into mid, trying to take control of this portion of the map early on. Our Renegades. Smoke down in the window and at short. Also one falling over there in connect that does completely cordon Vici out of mid for the time being. And actually Orman's gonna get bought down low. Over at short as Jacob tags him down, finds that early damage. Zoe King does get flashed out into mid, tries to take that peek. Isn't able to find anything on the back of it, but elsewhere, down here at this A bomb site, Advent, he's actually picked up an early kill onto JKS, and this is the man. It was responsible just for keeping a tabs on this A-bomb site. Dropped. You can see he fell over in the palace. Renegade's now sitting a man down with very little utility left. Can they be hard-pressed to find much? And Kaze's in with another kill for Vici in this round. So just Jacob, Liaz, and Gratis Faction left standing as the two old dogs of Renegade's fall. Ooh, Advent. They know he's here and they're trying to force him out of position. They do still have a molly on Liaz, but it's the Warbang with the AWP. Gratis Faction drops him. The issue is players are still falling for Renegades and it's a two on four with Palace Control for Vici Gaming. This is the trick up the sleeve. 20 seconds left to try and get this bomb plant in, but the second they even attempt it, we're going to have this wide swing from Palace, and that's why no one else is fighting here for Vici. It's a very open plant, but so King can catch the man on top of the stairs. Not the second, as Liaz finds a single tray, but Freeman is right there. Vici, really good call to, to stop fighting in that four and two. Wait for the bomb plant. They had a strong position in the Palace taken after they took down JKS, and that will be their second round. And that was the issue, right? We saw JKS, his whole role in that in that play there is just to keep a tabs on the A bomb site, make sure that Vici can't pressure into Palace down the ramp. And obviously the second they find him, we saw what that meant. Zoe King was allowed to take this forward position in the Palace. And ultimately that ends up being one of the driving factors between Vici picking up that round. So now it is just back to the drawing board here for Renegades. Vici are able to tie things up early on in this round. Just going to be a bit of a partial investment. Couple of pistols here and there. Armor over on Liaz. And once more, we see them trying to take control of mid. They do manage to get it. They've been very successful in taking control of this portion of the map. But they've struggled to convert it to anything more than just that. Oh, Jaken could have caught the timing there with that rotate and the CT spawn. They were swapping positions, but now he's moved in and there's two men there. Orman will find that kill. Now the solo boosted player have been taken out of the picture for Renegades, but they have thrown another man up into the window. It seems like Liaz wants a piece of the pie as well. That bomb going to be joining from top mid. And again, aggressive control towards A from Vici. We still have Zoking up towards the palace. Orman keeping an eye on connector as well, and that bomb is going to be dropped in the open. That's a big mistake for Renegades. They have no utility to try and regain control of it, so players are already doubling back. Now, we still have this window boost in play, so Liaz is in a position to really do work. He's got a gap, he's got an opening, but he isn't aware that no one's watching this spot. And, of course, we do have Advent in the market as well, so that's going to be the biggest issue of Liaz because he's now turned around with three players on B. Liaz spotted and tagged down to 50. So that position's given away. The bomb not going to be picked up. JKS can land a single kill as Liaz bails back into middle, but nice shots from JKS. The issue at hand is he needs to die or get this bomb down, and the latter certainly won't happen, but he might find enough kills to make it worth his while. Three to his name, up back through Cat. This bomb's here, but he's going to get blindsided by Zoking. Still... A strong eco from JKS, but it's going to be Vici finding the lead now on the CT side. 
I mean, this is one of the things that, that it, so interesting about this map, Vito, and obviously we've already spoke about the various inconsistencies of Avicii, but one thing that, you know, is kind of known about a lot of these Asian teams is, is one of the maps that becomes bread and butter for them is Mirage. So Renegade's trying to take that just sheer confidence pick, right? Trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe versus them here on this map. And I mean, that's the thing, right? Vici very, very well versed. It. We're kind of already seeing that as they have taken this early lead. So let's hope this decision to go toe to toe versus Vici on Mirage doesn't come back to punish Renegades. Obviously, still very early in this map. Don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But a tactical timeout called on it. And this is some time for Kassar to try and rein the boys in and. Make sure everyone is on the same page. Back to a rifle round here for Renegades and no AWP, but Kaze certainly got his. This is where he could come to life because him and Zoking have had a great start to this map. Two players highlighted on that desk. As men to watch out for, another man is free, man. And he had a great game of Mirage in that group stage as well. Renegades are deep into middle this time. Avicii looking like they want to challenge him from the connector. Orman, the smoke is just in his face. It's actually Advent, rather, but he won't find anything. Orman has rotated back into that B site, so mid and window is still being given up. Renegades have been afforded mid round after round. And for the first time in a while, Vici have fallen off of Cat, giving Renegades good control up towards his short position and potentially allowing for this B site split. They do also have Liaz in the apartments to go for that. Norman watching it from the site. The flash is going through and the timing catches him off. He moves away. Freeman might get their attention though. Norman going to flash himself right back in. They're not ready for it. He finds one. Freeman side by side. And this B site has been opened up. Orman has to try and hold on to it with his life. But the rotate is already in. And so much damage being done by Vici is left to Azza. And 1v2 required from him. He's already managed one kill in this round. 40 seconds. So... Ooh. That shot gives up his position. Freeman just going to peek into it. Vici, we are seeing the necessary players turn on up, and this is going to leave the boys in a bit of a predicament over on this T side. Four kills for Freeman there on that B site. Unreal work, considering, you know, we just said Kaze and, uh, and Zoki off to strong starts, and now we have that third man coming into his own. This is where, you know, not to get ahead of yourself with your renegades, but you should be somewhat worried. Oh, most definitely, right? Uh, only because you take a look at these rounds, they've been able to get control of it. Vici feel very comfortable giving that up. Yeah. They challenge for it early with Kaze, because just having him there in the window with the AWP means that Renegades, they have to throw these smokes, they have to throw the Molotovs. You see in every one of these rounds, they've normally wasted the vast majority of that utility when these plays come in. Now, this one looks like it's just going to be the standard A play. The smokes go down for the cross, and they also smoke off Soaking under Palace. They still have to clear this out, and you don't have a Molotov to make this man feel uncomfortable. Ooh. Azza will manage that one kill at the very least, and the bomb's able to go down. Azza's in with a second, so a chance for Renegades here as this fast A play looks to have caught Vici a little off guard. They've been able to retrieve the 1M4 over on the man with armor, and you can see Gratis Faction was tempted to go for that rotation. It's a good thing he decides against it, as now it does just fall onto him with the Deeg over here at ramp, and Orman's going to mop him up. So Vici able to recover a fifth round for them, as it's another successful retake here. Yeah, nice work on that A site. Again, you know, giving up control when it's necessary and not not you know over over complicating the rounds, not not fighting too much here, which has been a, a constant problem with Chinese teams in the past. Now Renegades, that was only pistols and armor, so a smoke take of that A site and a bomb plant with a few kills is certainly nothing to be ashamed of, but this is where they've really got to pick up another T side round. Five to two, guns ahoy, and the AWP back in the hands of Gratis Faction now. Looking like an immediate A play, but this time Vici actually want to challenge middle. This will relieve a lot of pressure, and as I won't expect the pace, he gets caught jumping. So Kaze opening up, and Renegades have to bound in towards his bomb site. Advan's going to get smoked off in the spawn, but there's just so many players by the bench for Vici. Kaze pushing through the smoke to his death, and the flashbang will keep Advan back. This should allow for a bomb plant for Renegades. They're in a four on four with Vici with a lot of utility. You've already commended them for their retaking, Harry. Well, now they really are up for the test. Flashing a CT almost gives Liaz that kill, and it would have been such a huge one to find. Would have allowed them to take control of this portion of the map, and there, you know, bomb planted for them. They could have just looked to play off the back of it. That's why you can see Liaz still tempted to challenge at this portion of the map. 
Grass faction gonna find one. JKS, quick double. And Desley has finally able to go to deal with the man in CT. Renegades, a third round locked in. As they are able to find one in these rifle rounds, finally. Yeah, it's nice post plants for Renegade. So you can see once they get comfortable and in positions they actually like to be in, it, it's uh, it's far better for them. Able to you know, get that deep CT control, flash Liaz in with Gratis Faction on that AWP. And JKS holding down the cross from the ramp as well. So another tactical timeout here for Renegades. Maybe not you know completely happy with how that round went. You can see they didn't have the read on it from the start, considering it hasn't got caught by the aggressive mid play. So they do need to remain aware of these constant change in setups from Vici. They've gone from you know having no mid control the entire half to rushing top mid with three players. So definitely a switch up, and Renegades seem to be at least on top of it for now. But this is still a good scoreline for Vici and a possibility to reset after their five round streak prior to losing that rifle. But in over half of these rounds thus far, Renegades have been able to get that bomb down. In five of the eight rounds that we've seen played, the bomb plant has come in for the T side. And so the fact that Vici is still sitting 5 3 up, feeling very, very comfortable in the retakes, does mean Renegades are definitely aren't out of the woods yet. Things are going to go from bad to worse as JKS once more is caught at this A-side of the map. Orman going in with the P. Overextends a little bit down into the connector and that does allow Azza to reclaim that man advantage back from Vici. Kazi up in the apartments, helped out by Freeman. He's able to get out of there just in the nick of time. And Freeman and Kaze at this B-bomb site, the dynamic duo. You certainly don't want to go walking into this if you're Renegades, and that will be a sixth round for this CT side. They answer straight back, and they manage to keep four players alive. A hard reset Renegades after winning their third rifle. That's so unfortunate. Well, if anything, first rifle round, but that's so unfortunate for Renegades, but they are getting wrecked on this B site. Should definitely stay away from that in the future. At least so it seems for now. Freeman locking down the site, and I like the re-peak as well. He gets cooled that he's at the back of the site, instantly jumps and peeks the apartments. That's not to be expected, especially when the orbit just dropped out of the apps. So Fichi now, 6-3. to three. Strong start to this half. Will it continue? It's just pistols for Renegades. JKS is on a flashbang in the palace, so he can't really help his team out too much, who are getting picked apart in middle. It's Kaze opening up, the Molotov cuts down the underpass player, and Kaze is just on a tear. Two kills, nice shot from Liaz with the Glock. That's ridiculous. And they might even try and boost up, but you can see Orman doesn't want to allow for that room. Taking down one of the two players in middle, JKS finished off in the apartment, and Liaz, he is a long way from home, and Orman will send him to the grave. Seven rounds of Avicii, only one casualty, not a worry. The AWP is even safe. And I think for Renegades at this point, wouldn't surprise me if we just see them go back to more of that set piece standard execute style of play. That's where they've been winning out the majority of these fights. You look at JKS over in that A bomb site, right? Whenever they've been trying to play with him in that lurk role, playing that default early on to watch for the aggression from Vici, that's where they've been punishing Renegades. So they go back to this setup between mid apartments. A. This time, Vici are going to challenge for mid. And Trades will go back and forth. That leaves us in a four on four now with Renegades. Securing mid control, finding that early damage onto Warman. Scales will be tipped slightly in their favor. They're even going to go as far as to boost Jacob up into the window. And now regrouping, looking to try and hit this B bomb site. So King, he's cleared Palace. And this is what Renegades are so worried about. This is why we see them having a hold for this aggression. He's getting so much information. Advent started to rotate off. And Renegades, if they go for this B play, there's going to be three players here. This is where you really need Jacob's flank to yield some serious results if you're Renegades. Oh, but they're watching it. The timing, it might just be good enough from Jacob, but he looks away and gets caught from the market, now losing the man advantage, and this jig is up. Renegades are going to be very clearly walking into this B site, and Vici have all the info. They even have the apps flank as well. This is a great round from the Chinese, and they are about to absolutely reap the rewards. Spray down in the apartments, one kill apiece for everyone on the B-bomb site, and it is Vici 
a very, very confident round. Now, Renegades didn't know it, but Vici had so much information that entire time, especially in that four on four when we see Vici start to fall out of middle and the rotate back into the connector and Renegades get that boost up. I assume that that would be, you know, the, the perfectly timed play to get Renegades in position, but Zoe can get so much info from that palace push and we see the heavy B stack as a result. It seems that Vici are not fearful of getting in the face of Renegades and it is paying off eight to three. Eagles here for Renegades, but they have only won a single rifle round. Oh, flash. Actually blinding Kaze there when he goes for the peek onto Azur. So close to getting picked off early on. Wants to try and get up in this connector, but so King's on the other side. And yep, Kaze's going to finish off what he started earlier on. Gratis faction in the smoke, and Orman finds him as well. Vici pressuring this eco of Renegades, not giving them any room to breathe. That bomb even getting dropped up on short. And it is looking like a fairly clean sweep. Liaz will find one, but I can't imagine too much here for Renegades. And this for me, you know, was an interesting talking point is that this Renegades roster in its current iteration, let's not forget, this is their first minor circuit, right? Obviously, back in London, you had the likes of Nifty still in the roster. Yeah. You know, we all know it didn't end too well for that team there. That was also back when you had you still. And that was, you know, I think it's fair to say a more experienced core within this team. I think, you know, you look over at Liaz and Gratis Faction. And the one thing that was maybe a worry for me is now there's that chance of the pressure getting to Renegades. They always had that experience, the knowledge that they've looked good to fall back on. The fact that, as we were talking about with Blair earlier on, the only team to have bested Renegades at the Miners has been Tai Lu, and it would be a real shame if that stat comes to a close. Oh, Azza got flashed there when he jump peeked across, so he didn't actually realize that there were two players close in middle. Renegades are going to go bounding back towards the A site as well, and Advent's locking them down through the smoke. This is a mess for Renegades. They can't even see their opponents, and they are getting shredded. This bomb looking to go down, but yeah, I mean, you're bang on, right? That's a 2v5 as they... Desperately try and find something. There's been a flank from Zoking coming through up into Palace, and this is surely the thing that seals Renegade's fate in this round. They don't look ready for it. Kaze. And now Grand's Faction deep in CT, able to isolate this first fight, but he's going to take one to the legs, and he's lucky to have survived that first shot. Zoking is the man who will cement this round. Peeking out from the palace, you can see Grat was not ready for that angle. Vici, 10-3, they're laying waste to Renegades right now. And look at the smiles on their faces as well. They know how big this is. Renegades map pick in this series. And as Blair said on the desk, this is a team that has not lost in the playoffs to anyone but Tai Lu. And now, well, the, the younger brother to Tai Lu, you could say, Vici Gaming, are currently Upsetting very, very confidently on their opposing team's map pick. So 10 to 3. Couple more rounds of the half. What have Renegades got for us? It's a half by again, and we know that these have had no success. Kaze has just been so free in middle once his smoke wears out. But there, there, there is a very good reaction from Renegades. Hard nades into the window, catches out that peak. They don't smoke it off, which forces Kaze to get aggressive, and he's going to pay for it. Now 4 on 4, but with the point man of Vici removed, this is the best case scenario for Renegades. See them once again with this foothold in mid. Issue is, even though they've had this in most of these rounds, it hasn't ever transpired into anything. Just missing the timing to spot Orman, and now they try and assemble that boost. The timing is picture perfect. Hazard and Lee has all that remain. And with this mid presence from Renegades, you know, considering how little utility they have, they are going to be struggling. You've got the one smoke still on Azza that can maybe get thrown into the connector to block off Advent's vision. Falls close at short, but they go running into Orman, and he's been lights out, 16 and 6. And look at this kill distribution on Vici, with the exception of Advent, who's 6 and 8, we have every player between 12 and 16 kills. So many players stepping up for Vici. Four mad fraggers in the server. And Renegades have not got one outlier. JKS is on nine, but really other than that, it's it's pretty silent across the board for this T side. And that's not what we're used to seeing here, Harry. 
Boy, is it showing on the scoreline. 11 to 3, Renegades. They've not had a round in forever, it feels. Fast play to the connector for Kaze. The smoke does extinguish the Molotov, and now we have the mid push from Renegade spotted. Gratis Faction tagged up very early on as well through the smoke from Zoking. Yeah, she has a little gap, but Liaz, that's a crucial entry. We needed someone from Renegades to find one if they want to win this fourth round. Looking like they want to split this A site as well. Liaz still coming through. It's Jaken with a double in the connector. He's caught jumping. The repeat from Orman might just save it for Vici, but it comes too late. Just Freeman alone off of that rotate from B, and he's got a huge task. Now going to hear him rotate again. JKS to cement that fourth round at the end for Renegades. It's still a massive half from Vici Gaming. Currently sat 11 to 4 up. Can Renegades pull this one back, or are Vici going to break the curse? Find out after the break. The boys were looking to bring it back to town, although Vici, they're showing this town ain't big enough for the both of them. Over here on Mirage, currently sat 11 of four up. Renegades let, yet to drop a map here in the Asia Minor. Could be about to lose their first in this playoff game. Now, they're gonna get helped out a bit in this round. Zoking got knifed initially by Orman, so <laughs> maybe a bit of a power struggle within Vici. That's how they settle their differences. But it's going to be this fast B play from the side of Vici. These smokes fall it short, and this is just Gratisfaction and Liaz both held back. But all over the top, they quickly assemble that boost, and that has allowed Renegades to find them out advantage. We saw them win the pistol over on their T side. They're looking to try and do it on the CT side once more. Only Jacob over here in the shop, and. If they're able to find him, with all four players coming in from short, this could cause problems. Jacob has to win this fight, and he's going to do more than that. How did he even get that first kill? Now Kazi up in the apartment, suddenly left in a one-on-four. It all falls apart. Beachy, things were looking good for them. It looked like they had the perfect read. You can read everything as well as you like, though, Hugo. At the end of the day, it comes down to winning out those fights, and Renegades will be able to get that job done. Yeah, it seemed like Vici could have won that round if they were somewhat more aware of Jacob's position. But after holding it for 10, 15 seconds, he comes in so late and they, uh, well, they were not watching it. That's the value of pushing those four players up from catwalk for Renegades. Takes way more the attention and Jacob can essentially come in on the flank as crazy as that might seem that the market is a flank, but 
11 to 5 now. Renegades in with a chance of bringing this back on that second half. But what on earth is that from Freeman? He's been having a stellar game. And that round, no exception. The only AK on Vici will find an entry kill, taking down Gratisfaction. Now, we need these rifles to try and suffocate Vici before it gets out of control. Luckily enough, that gun is irretrievable for the time being, and they will try and boost the player up, but Jacob's going to lock it down from the window. He's rotated in. Now tasked with watching the position of two men, the window and the connector. In the meantime, Vici will wrap back round towards the A site, coming through the T-spawn. We have a close shotgun position on ramp from JKS, and this is definitely going to need a kill or two. Limited utility, no kits. So if Vici are to get this bomb down, that's going to spell disaster for Renegades in the post plant. Creepy Crawly up through ramp. And JKS, it's all on this timing. Waiting ever so patiently. And oh, Kaze going to open things up. Jacob now looking to be the savior. Shuts down this A plate, leaving Advent here alone. And that's the bomb drop. This round should be going the way of Renegades. They dodge potential danger. Only Orman left standing, and he's going to go ahead and aggress in through mid. Almost picks up Jacob, but not quite. Renegades, a sixth round by the skin of their teeth. They scrape through that one. It was just the one rifle out there over on the side of Ichi. They've still got a buy coming here. Yeah, that was a good detail from Orman as well, in the sense of JKS has been very patient on ramp for the entire round, but the second Orman in that one in that 4 and 4 starts to put pressure on B on his own with the PT-50, that's when we see JKS wide swing a little bit closer towards the ramp, and he goes down. I think if he holds there, he gets a couple of kills, but a, a bit impatient. Maybe expecting that B play after the pressure was there, but... You know, one essentially fake player allowed for them to take a kill down on ramp, but it goes no further. Jacob holds down the line. And we said we needed someone to step up for Renegades because we have so many mad fraggers on the Vici side of things. Jacob is certainly looking to start to do that. Two kills in the pistol, four in the follow-up. As now we head into the buy round, this is Vici with full guns, with the exception, obviously, of Advent, who dropped over that AK. As good as a uh, T side as Vici have shown, the thing, and, you know, the reason why I'm still hopeful that Renegades can, re can recover over here in their CT half is just the fact that Vici clearly felt so comfortable over on that CT side, right? You take a look at all the real estate Renegades are able to acquire over in mid, over at the A bomb site, and they were just losing the individual duels. So over here on the CT side, they can just play more of a default, a bit more passive style. You can see that they're trying to challenge him. They double smoke the window, obviously for efficiency. Oh, but this boost finally yields results. Zoking, very patient. And that's Jacob. What a man to find. You mentioned in these last few rounds, he was able to find a monstrous amount of success. So quite the scalp to take. We're back into this three on three. And that's on the back of Azra and Gratisfaction. But as this push comes in towards a JKS under Palace, you can see Orman looks very aware of the possibility of there being a man at this portion of the map. The flash is good though. That's Lias to throw it in. Allows JKS to peek wide and find that kill onto the man in Sandwich. And it is just Kaze left standing in this one on three. I haven't seen that boost outside the connector at all, I don't think, on this T side. That's a nice change from Vici, a nice way to catch out an early player, but... As you say, it's uh, just Kaze. It's fallen apart since then. He's got to break the fence if he wants to hit the safe site. But 25 seconds of bomb so far away. May even just consider holding on to this gun, trying to play that eco round that is in the future. So it's going to limit him in the long run, though, Harry. We did want that AWP for Kaze in the T side, but he's not going to have the money for it in two rounds' time. Issue though with that little uh, gimmicky, you know, boost over in mid. It's great for finding you the opening kill. That's what we saw at Yield Vici. But you really need those sorts of gimmicks to work, right? You bet now Renegades are going to be very aware of the possibility yeah. of that boost over the smoke in mid. That's not something you can get away with running many times in one map. It's a nice cheese strat to, to yeah, yeah, definitely. Start things off. And and they're uh, the ones that you hope yield you a round, right? You hope you yeah. pick up that cheese round on the back of it. The issue is with that as well, for the CT side, I think the angle with the smoke is going to be kind of hard to see. You know, I don't think... While Zoking was very aware of it, and now Jacob will, will peer towards that with a, a, a bit of worry, like, 
the angle may be more favorable for the tease. I haven't seen it myself to, to know. Now, Gratis Faction, he's on the orb, but already been taken down by this AK. It seems like Vici is so good at finding the first kill when they set up their one rifle player. So like the second round all over again. Orb dropped as well. That's going to be retrievable by one of these T's. And Kaze's running up through the connector with Freeman side by side. Jacob won't be able to stop him, but that smoking window faded too late. And now they're already up past him. This could be that A split, but the bomb needs to be retrieved here. And oh, Advent timing does catch the kill as Jacob peeks wide. And now it's Vici on an eco round in a five and three. And this leaves JKS under a lot of pressure. He's going to crumble at this A bomb site. That bomb's rotating round. And for Azar and Liaz, 2v5, this is surely going to be a save. A gut wrenching call to have to make if you are Renegades in this scenario. You know it's for the most part this eco over on the side of Vici. We saw Orman invest in some armor alongside Zo King. That AWP, uh, not AWP, rather, the AK was held forward over on Kaze. But that's, that was it for them in this round. So the fact they've been able to convert that to a win is worrying, to say the very least. Money's going to start to swell a little bit here for Vici because you take a look at it, right? Most of these guys were just on the full eco. So they're sitting pretty on $2,000 each. They're carrying a lot of guns forward as they don't just win this round. It's not like it comes down to a tight 1v1 at the end that Kaze was just able to clutch out with that salvaged AK. It's a clean victory for Vici, and that perhaps is the most worrying part. Yeah, and just as it looked like Renegades could start to get their head back into the game on the CT side with the start looking fantastic, both pistols and the anti-ecos under their belt. But no further than that, Harry. A single rifle round before Vici upset it with that one AK on Kaze, and now 12 to 7, third tactical pause from Renegades. Definitely a time where they're going to need it because this money is in tatters. Only one player really able to buy up, but I mean, you're being optimistic with that. JKS has 3,900, so nothing really behind it. And... This is not what we expected in this series. No, I mean, you know, you, you looked at the map, map beaters, the way that it goes down. You admire the confidence on Renegades to go for the Mirage pick. They're one of the teams that do, you know, feel a little more familiar going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of these Asian teams on this map. Obviously, it's been a while since they've really had the chances to scrim against and play up against one another, what with Renegades being out in North America now. But, you know, you still have the likes of Gratis Faction and Liaz in here. It should be pretty used to playing versus some of these Asian teams. Obviously, being the more recent two to make that switch over to the North American uh, well, continent. But Vici sat 12-7 up on the map pick of Renegades. For those of you who are just joining us, it was an 11-4 half in favor of Vici Gaming. Now they sit 12-7 up and for Renegades here. You imagine some of the discussion that they've had in this tactical pause was to do with the buy and whether or not they want to go for it. That looks like they made the decision to. Yeah, I mean, they've got to, right? They can't afford to start ecoing at this kind of scoreline. They're, they're just going to fall, fall too far behind. And this would be Renegade's first map loss in the Asian minor if it does carry on in this way. A team that has just been known, renowned, in fact, for you know coming through these Asian miners with so much success with flawless playoffs. I mean, hey, right, we all saw that video where teams were asked who do they think is going to win the Asian minor. Literally every single one saying Renegades. Yeah, pretty much. They, they, they were the heavy favorite. Now, obviously, if they lose this, if they lose this best of three, even, this isn't all said and done, right? This is the uh, opening stage of the playoffs, but it leaves you down in that lower bracket. That's a very horrific spot to be in for the, the heavy favorites. I mean, there's a chance if Greyhound fall later on to MVP or have been a team that have been looking very strong as well, there's a chance we could have the elimination match be two Aussie teams. And that's that's not all we're expecting. Both these Aussie teams were very highly rated coming into this event. That being said, Vici can't take this away from them. They have played some fantastic Counter-Strike, especially on that first half. Now, let's see if it can carry on 12 to seven. Renegade's actually going for the eco. They're not going to be buying up around these two guns. A smoke execute here for Vici before players stacked up for Renegades. This is their best hope. As is going to move in past the smoke to try and work with his teammates. And Liaz has found the first from under balcony now, doubling down. Even three from Liaz. He needs to change guns because he's low on ammo, but it might not matter because the Molotov killing his teammates. He's alone. Not for long, Kaze finds the kill, and now it's that rotate from CT Sport, but coming through before Kaze recognize it. Gratis Faction taking the fight and winning out that eco round for Renegades. That is a savior 
because now Renegades, who planned on losing that round, have gone forward with a victory, and it's going to be Vici calling in the tactical timeout. Justifiably so, right? That was the attempted fast play into A. That was a round that Vici should have been picking up. You're, you're bang on. Renegades able to turn things around at a very critical moment here. Has that been enough to bail them out? Liaz. Renegades could owe their fate in this map to that man there. As he goes above and beyond for them, creates the opportunity for them to win that round, and they do so. Orp going to be over on Grat. He was able to retrieve that. But it seemed like Renegades, uh, they were so keen to take the fights, so maybe having a bit of a, a confidence booster in, the, in these last couple of pauses, right? We have not only, you know, as a run through the smoke to fight from Triple Box, but Gratis Faction do the same thing in the 1v1 as well. And, and that's what I want. I want Renegades to be confident, because at the end of the day, th these guys are so experienced. That's why I think we've seen them find success, though, in some of these weaker Byrads, because they're the ones where you feel like, okay, really, we don't have much to lose here. You know, we can just go for this aggression. We can go for these fights that maybe we wouldn't necessarily normally take. And that's where we've seen them look their strongest. So, King. Aggressing down through mid. He's very fortunate he doesn't go much further than that, because he did notice Grass Faction just there as he swapped onto him, peeking down into that connector. As the smoke fades, he's got to divide his attention now between mid and this ramp portion of the map. You can see Jacob over in the window. Might now look to step up and try and hold middle just to help his teammate out. Vici setting up for this A player. Late flank available from Ormond to try and cut off these rotations. Try and come in late. Molotov falls at the ramp, but already Zoking's gone running through. It's JKS in with a double. It was a big hero play from Liaz in the round prior at this A bomb site, and now JKS looks to have one of his own. Jacob's even doubled up, killing the flanker now down in mid. JKS is on a tear with his third kill of the round, and it is just going to be a shutdown from Renegades there. Vici Gaming read like a book by Renegades, and nine rounds taken on the CT side. That's going to break the money now, Vici, as things start to fall apart here for the Chinese camp. They had a great start to this map, but as we said, you know, off the back of that eco win from Renegades, things, things can certainly start to turn in their favor. That is looking to be the case, at least for now. Double digits should be secured, considering the lack of investment here at Deagle and a P250 for Vici. Is we expect probably a faster B approach here. They've already got three players up in the apartments. Freeman looking for this early one deag. as well. Jacob, got to be careful, getting tagged. Renegades don't necessarily need to take this fight early on. They can afford to give a little bit more room in middle to Vici, who don't have utility to get much further than it, and split towards a bomb site. Middle is only valuable, really, when you can you know, use it to your advantage in, in splitting, but Renegades are, are towing the line very well between contesting middle and also locking down these, uh, these you know, split positions, like short, like connector. They're not giving away a kill, but they're also not giving away you know, the sense of comfort in mid here to Vici with the constant pressure through that connector. Now we're going to see a boost, but you can see Jacob is already on the other side of things, so Zoking runs to his death. And this is the start for Renegades. And 5 on 4 with this cat play coming through. But with everyone coming in through middle, good luck making it past this crossfire. Yeah, I mean, for Renegades, they shouldn't lose anybody else. This should just be a clean round. That's really what they're hoping for, and it looks like that should be the case. As they mop up the remaining players, Renegades will be picking up a 10th here. They managed to keep it clean, and a much-needed confidence-boosting round, but also economy-building round for this Renegades CT side. Now sitting 10 to 12, very much back into this game. It was an 11-4 half in favor of Vici. Since moving on to this T side, they've managed one singular round. Certainly not the half they would have wanted, but Renegades at least showing us that they, you know, on paper are coming into this game to be the expected victors. So this comeback isn't the most surprising thing we've seen. Smoke in middle, Jake gonna run right by it. He doesn't want to challenge that, so back towards the connector. Keeps the top mid smoke, but that forces Vici out of mid. They come from underpass instead, but there's still no one committed towards here. Kind of faction on that boost watching for the uh, window spot. 
Molly might be forced Sokin back. First default round we've really seen from Vici in a while here on the T side, just holding off for any CT aggression. But Renegades have not been doing that. Well, while they've been fighting within the bomb sites, we haven't seen any T app, any sorry B apps pushes, any Palace plays. No need. As Kaze looks desperately for this pick over on the A site. Jacob is very exposed, but it would require Kaze to walk out in order to get this kill. And JKS is watching that from the top, so it's not going to be a worry. Spawn still back in the T spawn, but Vici with three players down on ramp may lean towards a later A play with these two players coming in on that connector split. Avan going to go in dry though, looking for an early peak just on his own. If you can find a kill, that'd be great. But Kaze has actually caught Jacob repositioning, not knowing the line of sight. Now 30 seconds left. This bomb yet to be picked up, but Jacob has dropped the AWP, but that's given away his position. They don't have a molly for it, but Avan has the headshot. Gratis faction needs to hold the spawn, and he started off with one. Oh, but there's a flight from Zoking. Liaz is going to check it. So it never comes into fruition for Vici. Now Orman and Freeman, the double... Mm, oh. The double moons rather, but only five seconds. And Orman not able to win this round. Renegades will be him at an 11th. They recover that nicely. The triple setup down towards CT. They managed to make that work against all odds, even going as far as to read into that flank from Zoking. Yeah, a lot of patience up in the palace to find that kill on Jacob, but you know, as said, that should never really be coming through. Jacob should know JKS's line of sight. That's not covered. There's a very good chance the player could be there. Either way, it won't cost Renegades a round. Instead, it will put Vici on Eco. And they've been very unsuccessful with these pistol rounds before, unless they have one AK. Those uh, those have worked out quite well, but none here. Flash into B from Advent. He's got two of them. Oh, he actually doesn't throw it out, and the nade's going to do a lot of damage. No one's blind. Liaz finally gets hit by the flashbang, but it's too late. He finds one for his troubles. The trade is there from Freeman, but these pistols are actually coming in clutch for Vici. They found themselves the man advantage and guns to be retrieved. Now, Jacob wants to keep up the pressure before this bomb goes down, but with a plant in play and the wallbang not connecting, he finds the man on the site. Two on bench here for Vici, and they still haven't even shown that trick up their sleeve. And for Grat here, a 1v3 that just never should have happened. Renegades know it, and this is devastating. He's just got to back off. As he tries to fall back, you're dead on. He's going to run into this flank from Ormond. Vici with just pistols, able to find a round. 13 to 11. And now for Renegades. While they're able to invest here. Their money does now start to look uncertain in these coming rounds. I mean, a loss here for Renegades, and you're forced by until the very end of this map. Things have been great on the recovery, but yeah, you're right. This could uh, very much get out of control. And Vici want to go for another one of these fast B plays. It worked out in the previous, so double down. Now Liaz alone here committed to the site. His teammates back in the market, and he won't be able to get out through the smoke in time. As is caught around the edge of it, and Orman will find the entry. This is Renegades considering the save, because in a five on three down, with no picks being presented, as you say yourself, the money getting broken in the future. They need these guns, so... Vici being gifted 14 rounds with that fast to be approach, and Renegades are going to have to hold on to their weapons. It was looking so good for the Australians to pull it back, but falling at the final hurdle. And every gun needs to be saved here. Gratisfaction can't afford to lose his AWP, and you can see Vici won it. They're chasing, they're hungry for this kill. Two players in connector. Top peak as well from stairs. Gratisfaction does spot it, but it's gone back down to the jungle. Luckily, he has JKS side by side to help him out, and these guns will be safe from Renegades. The flank down ramp will not be there in time, so it seems, and we're gonna get 14 rounds for Vici. Still three guns left up for both teams, and uh, yeah, this is it. This is the, the make or break round for Renegades. Win this and you're still in it. Lose it and you get broken for 15. And 
this time around, Vici switching things up once more. Going to make mid control the mainstay of their setup this time around, and they do get it decisively. These flashes right into B. You can see Orman throwing a lot of utility at this portion of the map early. And Renegades maybe feeling a bit conditioned, a bit worried as to if Vici opt to throw in another fast B play. They have not, but you can see. They've had to pull the man out of window. That was gratisfaction, somewhat floating now in that CT area. Keeping an eye on the short wrap, but this is almost certainly going to culminate in the A play for Vici. Kazi lining up that flash for his teammates out from the connector. There's Zoking securing the entry. Will they be ready for Jacob, who right now is an unknown entity here? Oh, they certainly are. It's Orman to delete the man. Trying to hide away. Great Molotov forces these players over in jungle to disassemble that boost and just spraying through the smoke. They're able to pick the round up. Aza has to save and Vici 15 to 11. They're going to reach map point here on the map pick of Renegades. Without that Molotov, they may have even, you know, gotten away with the save. Renegades could have bailed out of that round and, and held onto three guns, but it keeps them there and it, it tags them down so low. Really nice set piece from Vici. And very much on the same page for a team, and especially a region that, that has been, uh, you know, definitely uh, definitely struggled at time versus some more methodical teams. Vici really catch Renegades off, part, off, uh, off guard, rather, with that fast A play. One of the things I'm really liking from Vici right now is, you know, we think about how we've seen them play in the past, and it, usually it has been about, you know, big moments, big individual plays. One thing I'm really liking is we're seeing them set each other up nicely with flashbangs, great utility usage to open up a lot of these rounds. Good example here is Kaze lining up that flash to facilitate this push out from Connector. Another great example is what we just saw there, that Molotov raiding into the jungle with the smoke down in front of it. And what that does is, is, you know, Renegades, they couldn't find anything through it. It also forced those players behind to have to reposition, and it forced them into the bullet spray from Advent. Already the man of fire secured it. Zoking in these last few rounds, he's been the man on the entries. He's been the man opening up these bomb sites. He's continued that once again, this time locking down the mid portion of the map. Renegades, a team that was yet to drop a map here at the minor. Potentially about to go 16-11 down on their map pick and move 0-1 down in the series. Vici setting up for the A play. JKS and Azza, what can they do to hold it back? Well, JKS is forced forward by the Molotov. He can't play under the balcony, so he's very open. Does get himself one for his troubles, and they're yet to trade it out. JKS is tearing them up. The drop from the Palace for Freeman will save this A site for Vici, as Renegades have no one else committed due to those smokes being down. So a three on three as the plant comes through, but it might come too, too late. Granis Faction, a chance to stop that bomb. He's coming in too late to do it, but he does find the kill as Orman attempts to hide behind the back of the site. Now two players up for Vici in the post plant. Kaze playing ramp with that AWP. And as they're coming in from the top of the stairs, we do have this boost up from Renegades to try and get a little more information, but they've not got the time to play with. No kit on this CT side as they move in. Freeman's caught out the first player. Second one coming in as well. Freeman's found both, and they haven't even seen Kaze, who comes out of ramp at the final second. 16 rounds to Renegade, to Vici rather. They will take the first map away from Renegades here in the Asia Minor. And on Renegade's map pick as well, that has got to hurt the Aussies with their backs up against the wall, about to be knocked down to the lower bracket if they cannot recover on Inferno. So join us after the break for that second map.